during the summertime, we're monitoring the fire situation, monitoring the weather, we're monitoring resources, where they're going, and so it's not a, a big surprise when we're dispatched to a fire. Our rigs are deployed for majority of the summertime. Went to a fire down in the South Bay. Santa Cruz um, for a couple fires down there. We're released. We were kind of on a, a roller coaster of a strike team. We were at a different fire down in Milpitas. So we were on our way back to Marin and we literally got into the county. The tones went off and said, hey, you guys are getting reassigned to the car fire. Fire behavior, we could hear the radio traffic all the way up um, the I-5 corridor, and there was a lot of fire starting in Tehama Glen or in, um, even in Shasta. And as we entered the unit, a new fire broke. Actually, in route to the car fire, we got diverted to a new start, so we spent a day on uh, the Crestline fire, which is over by Bernie. We got back to our hotels, got the engines back, had dinner, got back into our hotels about around six o'clock at night. We actually got pulled out that night, around midnight, and uh, sent to the car fire. Onto the fire line, which we hadn't actually been on yet. That initial phase of the new initial attack fire is a little more challenging because you don't have a map um, that's pre-made for you or that you have access to, so you gotta find your own map. I was working on getting my certification for my engine boss, um, and I had my captain from the station, he was with me in the back seat, so. So he was running the engine, and I was just there just to kind of help precept him. He was letting me run the show. Um, I had two seasonals on board as well, and That so. fire showed some pretty good fire behavior. Um, right away. You know, for 2 a.m., it was very impressive. A lot of times it's that hurry up and wait atmosphere, and this was not the case here. Uh, we, we raced out the door, went straight to the incident. I met with the uh, structure protection group supervisor and immediately he put us to work. That day was, you know, just beyond gnarly. This was gonna be a, uh, one of those assignments that they were gonna uh, be putting all those skills to use. And so they did almost immediately. That's so hot. It was so widespread at that point, and there's so many different spot fires that I had kind of thrown out ahead of itself. You looked at the grass or thought about the grass the wrong way, and it, it lit and it went, and it went big. So as I've spread these my crews out in an area I didn't know, I've used Tablet Command now for mapping, for street assignments, for addresses. I have all of that set up. I've got it um, hooked up to the topography, so I can look at the topography and see what's going on. And I've gone back and forth to the satellite photos to see what some of the fuels are, because this is all nighttime. A situation like this, it's very fast moving and people are kind of scattered all over the place. There's not a lot of room to communicate on using a radio or a telephone. So having that map with the dots on it that shows where everybody is, I think is huge. We were pretty mobile, um, pretty aggressive, I would say throughout the whole day. You know, as I was spread out on this incident, um, I was able to really keep track of those resources by seeing exactly where they were and knowing where the fire was. I could, I could really track, okay, who's gonna be impacted next. This is, I think, a fifth, sixth day out of county, so we've been working um, pretty hard the past few days, moving around a lot, so you know, everyone's obviously a little exhausted. Then, at about five o'clock, things really changed. That's when I noticed two columns coming up that were capping out, probably reaching 30, 40,000 feet. We want to do a U-turn to go back and meet up with our other engines because we got separated. Um, at that moment, when we went to do that U-turn, we realized the fire just exploded behind us. So. And that's when just the environment um, really just really changed. And that's where they're talking about the fire tornado. Um, from that point in, in Kinswick uh, Dam areas where, you know, we were, we, were, we were in a fight for our lives and we were just trying to find a place to, to hunker down. And just spot fires everywhere. Um, the winds were just howling. Um, so we're starting to get cut off in front of us. We see fires starting to burn across the road, which was Iron Mountain Road. The fire just laid over everywhere, and the only route that we could travel was this Kinswick Dam Road, and that's where we kind of made that left on the Kinswick, Kinswick Dam, Dam Road. It's a mid-slope road, um, pretty decent fuels on both sides, a lot of brush, and as we get about 200 yards down the road, this everything goes black in front of us. I asked him where he was. He said he was on Keswick Dam Road and Iron Mountain Road, and right away my heart sunk. Pulled it up on Tablet Command and realized where they were and realized that it wasn't going to be good. Kind of a mid slope road, and that fire was kind of coming up through a couple drainages to the point where we couldn't go anywhere. We, we were trapped on that road. I can't really describe the fire behavior, but in my 27 years, it was uh, fire behavior I hadn't seen. 
it wasn't normal fire behavior. It wasn't something you could plan for. So I locked myself in my truck, get their location on tablet command, exactly where they were. I pulled up the satellite photos and was able to get the fuels and got a hold of them and said, hey, you need to take Keswick Dam Road. And at the end of Keswick Dam, about a mile and a half, you're gonna to come to the dam parking lot. That is your safety zone. It's your only safety zone. And if you don't get there, you're probably not gonna make it. Where we were at, it was non-survivable. We wouldn't, we, we wouldn't be able to, to survive very much longer there. All of a sudden, it lightens up a little bit, and that's when there's just flames rolling across the road. And, and that's Good when Pat's like, hey, there's a little bit of, of a break. I said, Pat, if there's a break, take it. Couldn't go turn around, go behind us. So we had to make the decision, we gotta keep driving down this road. You know, knowing that if we make it through here, we're gonna to get to a safety zone. We'll be right down by the reservoir, the river. It'll be a good area to be in. He said, I copy. We're on Keswick Dam Road and we're heading that way. And I could see him moving on tablet command, which for me was a big relief. I have no option but to continue to drive and just as fast as I can, as safely as I can to get through that as the flames started laying over the road. And at the same time, the engine started losing power because it was kind of starved of oxygen. And we kind of made like a dog, dog leg right turn. And once we kind of get to the dog leg right turn, the, the vegetation started to change. All I could think about is don't get the engine stuck. What was in front of me? And it, was, it went from that just that dark, dark black to kind of that caramely gray kind of smoke. Um, I'm like, hey, I, we, might be, we might be getting out of this. Everything opened up. We saw unburned fuel, the vegetation was thinner. And then as soon as I looked up, we saw um, actual Kinswick Dam. I said, Kinswick Dam is where we, we want to go. Giant gravel lot. Um, so we realized, hey, we made it, you know, I'm like we're pretty stoked, but still so shaken up. We were in a pretty safe spot there. And I said, but you know, if this parking lot's safe, the water's safer. And so we just hiked down right to the, to the river. I got myself in some pretty um, interesting situations in my past. Um, some um, scary moments, but I mean, nothing could get close to this experience. Um, it is a very risky job that we do, but hoping that with our training and experience, um, you know, with all this other stuff and technology that's coming out, it's just going to make us, you know, safer and we can continue to be aggressive. Having tablet command was essential in, in a lot of our functions and just made, we've been functioning for many years, uh, one, one way and one direction using certain things. And having that device and having that program uh, truly helped not only our crews, but it helped save a lot of it and defend a lot of structures um, in that entire area, just based upon having knowledge and mapping and, and ideas of where the fire's coming based upon where our resources were. So if you expand it even farther, and if I were to have Tablet Command and I'm was running that division and had every resource on my map, be even better, be indispensable.